In this episode of Believe, join us as we take you to the haunted St. James Hotel. Watch as we communicate with the spirit of Jesse James and capture some of the most compelling stuff I've ever seen in a channeling experiment that will leave you speechless. It was a beautiful trip to New Mexico. We couldn't help but feel as if we had stepped into a portal and traveled back into the 1800s. For this investigation, we teamed up with Bill Chappell and Chris Fleming, a perfect combination of scientific and spiritual investigators. We arrived at the St. James Hotel just as the sun was setting and began to prepare for that night's investigation. was originally started by a man named Henry Lambert who was a French chef. Uh, he came to New Mexico like a lot of people after the Civil War and uh, landed or eventually landed in here in Cimarron, New Mexico. Back then it would have been New Mexico territory but in 1872 he started building this place as a uh, dining room and bar and then by 1880, he had built on the area that became known as the hotel part of it. Now, in the village of Cimarron, this place was known as a very, very wild and wicked place, especially the bar. But then on the other hand, you had a hotel that was known and a restaurant that was known for its extreme elegance. So you had elegance and violence and kind of this weird balancing act going on around here. And as a result of that, we had 26 people die in some kind of violent death in the bar. Many believe the most haunted room in this hotel is room number 18. Due to the violent reports of this room and the high levels of activity, this room has been padlocked shut and no one is allowed to enter. Visitors will leave numerous offerings to the spirit as a way to maintain peace with them. During an interview with Judy in room 18, she said she began to feel uneasy. We asked her if she felt like something was with us in the room, and she said she believed there was. We asked Chris to step in and perform a quick EVP session to see if Judy was right. Yeah, I'm April 14th, and I'm with Judy, John, and David. First session. You want to ask a question, Judy? Is anyone here? I would really like to know who all is in here. Do you have anything to say to her? Maybe they view me as a lady and they won't talk to it. They should talk to you. Do you have anything to say to her? Maybe they view me as a lady? Yes. Yes. Wow. Listen. What, what, what? Listen. Do you view me as a lady? Yes. Bring it, bring it a little closer so you can hear it. Okay, hang on. Wow, that was cool. After catching an awesome EVP, we moved to the next room where Bill explained how his EM white noise device works. So if I record right now and ask a question, how do you believe this will affect that? Um, I, I think what we're talking about there is strictly convergence. It, it's by generating a complex tone pattern like that. If what we're trying to hear, if we're matching waveforms between the tone pattern that's generated and what's being spoken, if that's really what's happening, um, 
if we get a constructive interference, we're going to get the amplification of that pattern, and it's going to make it more clear, readily available. I see what you're saying. So any type of EVP or any response we're getting from a ghost or spirit or any energy that's here, this will amplify it. That's, that's the idea, yes. Oh, that's awesome. Were you a cowboy that had visited or resided this place when you were alive? Whoa, cowboy. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Awesome. Liking that? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Right, so we're here in Jesse James' room. Uh, Anthony, you actually have a, a connection to Jesse James. Um, which is kind of cool because you didn't know about it before we... You didn't know that he was one of the people who used to stay here. No, I didn't. Uh, it was a surprise when you guys brought it up in the car. Because... I, uh, on my grandma's side of the family, um, the Greenlee side, they, uh, always talked about how we are related to Jesse James. So, uh, when I got here and found that out, I mean, where else better for me to stay other than his room? And the creepy part is, uh, we're all sleeping upstairs. And I'm alone down here. So. Alright, dog. See you guys later. Mary, do you like residing here? Asshole. We've moved the investigation into the infamous room 18. We began by attempting to communicate with Thomas Wright, a man who reportedly died in the room. Thomas! Are you here with us? Yes. I am Thomas. It said. Are you here? Yes. I heard that. It's possible? Yeah. Yes. Thomas. Are you here with us? Impossible. Holy what crap! The... Impossible? Oh God. Yes. Impossible. It's oh impossible. My... Oh my God. Is... <laughs> Higher than Christ. Did you guys die? Die! Holy Whoa. 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 Did you hear that? Yeah, oh, boo! Oh my god. It sounded like an old like Western dude, right? One more time. Oh, wait, one more time, man. Dude, that is miraculous, dude. I got chills right now. Sorry for freaking like that, but it went through the wall. It, oh my god. As I was leaning there, I felt something reach through the wall, grab my shirt and my back, and tried as if it tried to pull me through the wall. Now, your mind is gonna be like, this is impossible, because nobody can put their hand through a wall. But anybody would know that feeling when if someone was grabbing them from behind, whether they have a jacket on, a shirt, t shirt, doesn't matter, and pulls you, that's exactly what occurred. So it startled me to a sense that this is not possible. And I jumped up and I screamed. But then I pretty much realized that I just had an encounter. That's the first. I was never touched when I was here before. Mm -hmm. um, from what I remember, but not like, but dude, it grabbed the shirt and like crinkled it. Who's the prettiest woman here? Have you slept with her? I fucked her? What? Who's the prettiest woman here? 
Yep. Yeah. I yeah. Holy it. shit. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell us your name. Harm people in here? And Chris, you are you made this device? I worked with Gary Galka in creating this. The okay. spirits actually named it. We asked them, "What do you want to call this?" And they said, "Spirit Box." Really? And um, we then said, "Okay, what number do you want associated with it?" Gary told me, and I asked them. I said, seven, 11, 13, seven, seven. So we said, "Let's go with seven. Future models will be eleven or 13. Nice. And I said, "So what should we call this?" Spirit Box Seven, and they said, "SB 7 like perfect. Gary so pee in there. This device was effectively named by spirits via yeah. ITC communication. Absolutely. Do you realize you're no longer in a physical body? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's cool. So you tell Judy to let people sleep in here? Rifle or a gun? Pistol. Pistol. He said pistol, dude. Pistol. Did any of you people ever meet Jesse James? I did. I did. Very cool. He's dead. Who killed him? Can we hear Jesse's voice, please? Right here. Did you hear that? Uh, did you hear that? That was that was different. Okay. Can you please speak again? We moved the investigation to the bar for our final experiment. Bill set up a new program which scans the room with an infrared beam. This device effectively creates a three-dimensional map of the human body. Our goal was to have Chris attempt to channel a spirit and capture the spirit using this program. Spirits, cowboys, do you want to speak through me? Do you want to channel through my body? Do what it's like to be back into the physical body, yes or no? Do you want to be able to breathe through my nostrils, taste the air? What do you want us to do? Speak up. At this exact moment, another figure miraculously appears next to Chris. It seems as if this figure is trying to enter Chris's body. Chris is completely unaware of what we are seeing on the screen. Your masculinity. You're a man. Powerful. Cowboy. How powerful are you in the spirit world? What can you make happen? Can you make objects move? Can you make contact physically? Or are you just a ghost? Just a figment of the past. No longer existing. Gone. No longer real. Just imagination of everybody that walks in here. No longer do you have an intent or purpose. But you want to make your presence known. But you're not dead. You're not the past. You're not a memory. You still exist. What's it going to be? Can you make two bangs so we can hear you? Two knocks.
Does it feel good to be back in a human body? Tell us your name. Sam. Sam? Cowboy. Feels good, doesn't it? So this is your old stomping ground? You look for your gun? You don't got it here, buddy. I'm sorry. You're unarmed. Sam, look at me. All right. How old are you? When was your birthday? Eighteen twenty six. Is this still Sam? No. What's your name? Chris. <laughs> You're back now, huh? You here now? Show you. Walter. 
Walter who So what's your name? Sam? Chris. Chris, you yeah, right? Yeah. You hit your head on the counter like four times. You're going to like this, Chris. I guarantee it. So as a channeler, I'm able to feel how they died. I'm able to see how they died and get bits and pieces that's related to it, including their emotions and their thought process. Bill captured with his computer software program that he created something very odd, that we may have something pretty compelling here that could be the future of investigating in mapping not only us as an investigator, but actually mapping a ghost or spirit that is present right next to us or trying to communicate to us.